I think it's on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, everybody. Um, today I want to show you how to make uh, a print from the uh, negatives that you already developed and put into uh, your uh, negative sleeves like this. I already pulled out the negative that I wanted and on a light table we put the uh, negative inside the negative carrier. Now I'm going to try and open this up like this just to show you. Okay, the negative is sitting so the emulsion side is down and the um, uh, base side is up. The base side is sort of the shiny side. The dull side of the film is the emulsion side. Now the other thing is, you put this in upside down because the enlarger when it's on turns it uh, right side up. So we'll actually be projecting it so that you'll see uh, you know, what you photograph. Okay. I'm going to get this back down in there. Uh, if you just hold this up, be careful you don't when you're sliding it in here that you don't uh, scratch your negative. Okay, just like that. All right, we're turning larger on, turning on the space, and then turning on the, the timer. I'm going to go every, uh, through everything again just so you uh, uh, you know can do it when you go back to your own enlargers, and so you know. Okay, the timer it has tenths of a second, uh, which is down here. So you can turn it to one tenth of a second, and that'll turn the light on for that length of time. Okay, or up here, 10 seconds, or here, one second, two seconds, and so forth. If you need more than that, 10, 11, 12. And if you need tenths, one, two, three. So now you have 12.3 seconds. Okay, this turns you larger on and off. Uh, this raises uh, this little flange so that you can put the uh, negative carrier inside here. Uh, on the bottom, there are flanges that sort of seat inside there. So you want to make sure you uh, put it in so it's right in the middle. This thing's sticking out towards you, and there's a number on the top of that for each enlarger. Once you've done this, make sure you put this back down. You can see a lot of light coming out of there, and I recommend putting it in and setting up without the light on. I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes, but you want to like close that back down so that you don't have a lot of light pouring out over the, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, your fellow classmates' uh, paper. Okay, the next step is to sort of zero out everything. Uh, this is a color enlarger, and there's a light in here. Uh, it's called a diffusion head, so the light's sort of bouncing around in a white chamber and it filters down through uh, the negative, through this bellows, which you move to focus, and then through the lens, okay, um, which has a, uh, okay, an aperture setting, uh, exactly the same as your camera. Now the lens is sort of flat field, which means it doesn't have a curvature in the field like the lenses you use on your uh, uh, regular camera. So it's edge-to-edge uh, -edge sharpness, which is what it needs to be in order to make a good print. But it does have from 2.8 to 16 aperture stops uh, settings so that you can uh, change the light uh, any larger. Now, we're not going to use these, but you can control the contrast, which is the difference between the lights and the darks in your image by uh, using uh, two of these. Uh, magenta increases the contrast and yellow <coughs> decreases the contrast. And eventually you will use these when you need to. Okay? So uh, usually uh, in this particular setting, this particular dark room, with the chemistry that's being used, the paper that's being used, you end up about 40 magenta to get a normal print. Um, right now, we're just going to start off without anything in the enlarger head. Okay. There's a little knob here that you can check and see and make sure it's on its brightest setting. Right. And then once you're using filters, you need to sort of pay attention to this because this 
allows the filters, uh, sh uh, to, you know, when you have them in there, uh, to show. And then when it's like this, it's for focusing. So if you just leave it like this for now, you can, okay. And I'm just going to zero this out again. Okay. There's a little knob on this side that will lock the head once you get it into position. And then focusing uh, is right here and right here on this larger. Okay. Now, we've already done uh, tests for uh, uh, you know, making a contact sheet. And I think we were using uh, uh, F4, 5, 6. Okay. So I'm going to set this at 5, 6 to get, just to get it ready. And then I'm going to put this in. This is an old contact sheet. If you use the back of this to focus rather than this, it works better. This is called an easel. Uh, it sets on the baseboard, just like that. Now, we want to make photographs of the entire negative. We don't want to crop. I want you to see what you're taking so you have a better understanding of like, what you need to do to sort of correct things. And then uh, the best way to do that is to sort of leave a half inch here and a half inch here and make enlargements this big um, right here. So with that light on, I'm going to try and do that. Okay. If you get it down real close, you can see it on the edge. Right. Okay. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. I'm going to move the negative. Just a little bit. And then make sure it's in the middle. Now you can't see that from back there, uh, but you can um, you can tell from right here um, pretty much uh, you know the position of the projected image. So that's about how high your enlarger will be. Uh, probably for all your photographs. And that makes uh, one less variable, because if your larger is moved up or if it's moved down further, that will change everything slightly. And uh, it makes it easier if you make all your prints just about the same size. Okay, questions? Okay, I'm going to stop that. No more